Morning. Week two of our virtual learning time together. Hopefully you're not too bored yet. So how about on a day like today, it's supposed to be 70 degrees. Let's get outside. Let's go for a run. Now, even if you're thinking, eh, I don't feel like going for a run, how about just for a hike or maybe even a bike ride if you're feeling adventurous? No, I'm not talking just the city streets or the Round Tree Branch Trail, for example. I'm going to take you to another trail that's closer than you think. And I got to thank Mr. Geeson for this one. He recommended what we call the Hirsch Trail, which is just to the south of town. And I'm going to explain some more local geology to you along the way. Let's head out there. Hey everyone, we made it. Now you might be wondering, where do we go? Just behind me is a big cornfield. Is that where the trails are located? Now, you can either go left or right. Just depends on how quickly you want to get to the trails. Now, if you go around to the left, follow the edge of the cornfield here, the trails will begin pretty quickly up on the left side. Now, if you go around to the right, the trail will start, but you have to go all the way around this cornfield. So it'll make for a good uh, half mile walk or run. Now, talking about walking or running, it's a great little hiking spot. There are numerous trails. If you want to run or bike, plan on it being pretty adventurous, especially if you have a bike, you definitely need to be wearing a helmet on this one. The uh, trails are aggressive. So uh, let's take a run down there. And ultimately we're gonna go be going downhill and getting to a creek bed. Let's check it out. to the creek. After my uh, little warm-up run, now I'm down on the, what we call the floodplain of the Blockhouse Creek. That's the name of the creek. You might remember where does Blockhouse come from? That was actually the name of a mine that was around during the late 1800s around here in Platteville. So they named the creek, at least I'm guessing, that's what I'm going to assume. They named the creek after that famous mine that was here. Now as we look at our surroundings here, we're kind of surrounded by big hill on two sides, right? And valleys like this are kind of unique to the Platteville area, at least in Wisconsin. Now where I'm from, the Waukesha, Milwaukee area, the landscape is relatively flat. You won't find river valleys like this where we have very steep sided hills on both sides, right? River from uh, kind of where I grew up, it's all flat. Why is that? That really has to do with one word, glaciers. And I bet a lot of you are thinking that same thing. Now, glaciers covered a good majority of our state. And now here in Southwest Wisconsin, we, uh, there's this uh, famous word that we call driftless. You might've heard of uh, the driftless market uh, or just kind of heard that word in passing, but never really understood what it meant. Now, driftless means that glaciers, at least in the recent history, did not cover Southwest Wisconsin. That has allowed this nice hilly terrain to remain. Now back in southeast Wisconsin, Waukesha, for example, we had at one point up to one mile of ice on top of the ground level. Just imagine one mile of ice. That's a lot of weight. So what does one mile of ice do? It presses and it flattens the landscape. So if you've driven from Platteville to Madison, you know that it's relatively hilly. Go from here to Mineral Point, some big dips and dives. But let's say if you travel from Madison to Milwaukee, man, that drive is totally a dozer. It's straight, it's flat, it's boring. 
you're thinking next time you drive there, ah, why is that? Glaciers covered that landscape and flattened everything around it. That's right, Platteville Science Olympiad, nerds can be fit too. Anyway, we're down on the creek level. And this is the Blockhouse Creek. I recommend, don't try to jump this gap. Trust me, I've tried, doesn't work. You'll get wet. Anyway, another nice thing about being in the Dripless area, hopefully you can hear me over the creek noise, is that is, it is allowed what we call bedrock to be exposed at the surface level. Now in glaciers covered uh, much of Wisconsin, not only did it have a lot of ice on the surface, but also dropped a lot of glacial debris on it from dirt, rocks that were carried from the north. Think of a glacier to be like a big conveyor belt. It picks up rocks, it carries them, grinds them up into small dirt fragments and drops them wherever it happened to extend to. Meaning, if you were to go to southeast Wisconsin, notice in the distance here, those rock walls on the left, that's what we call our bedrock, right? Problem is, in southeast Wisconsin, you have to dig sometimes up to 300 feet to get to bedrock. You don't have to do that here in the dripless area because glaciers weren't here. They didn't dump rock and dirt onto the surface, which made it nice for miners when they came to Platteville and the surrounding areas, the lead and the zinc was in the bedrock right near the surface. People in southeast Wisconsin didn't have that luxury. And it's also going to lead us into a little bit of the uh, biological history of southwest Wisconsin because we have these rocks that tell very clear signs of life in the past. Come down to this riverbed, just take, I say, even a minute and you will find evidence of life in the past. Even if I look at this rock right here, this was not planted. You can see these are all fossil shells of what we call brachiopods. They're kind of clam-like creatures. They're probably the most common fossil that you'll find in this area. A little bit further down the creek now, it's almost pass for a beach, except for this fair amount of rock piles that are here. Now I found a few other gems that I think I'm gonna keep in terms of fossils. So if we check this out right here. Now this may look like a honeycomb, but what this actually is, each one of those little indentations, that's a region where a small piece of coral lived in the ancient past here in Platteville. So this is a really cool piece. So this is an ancient coral and small coral reefs that are around here. Here's another rock piece that I just actually came upon. This is another fragment of coral. So small creatures would live in each one of these little holes here. Now each trail here has been uh, nicely named and I really need to give credit to the local biking organization that does this, that actually grooms and makes these trails. I know I think Mr. Giesen in the past told me that the uh, local Boy Scout troop actually helps groom these. Uh, during a certain times of year. But if you take some of these trails, it'll lead you to some other neat geological features and actually processes. So if you go a little bit down towards Tristan's Twist, some very heavy rains last year brought some big flooding to this area. And the river that we just went to was that whole floodplain was completely flooded. And during these rains, a rather large little uh, gorge was cut in one of the stream valleys that came down through here that's exposed all of this bedrock. So if you're a little fossil hunter, this is really a gold mine where you want to figure out what kind of rocks are actually here. Now in this creek bed with all sorts of bedrock exposed, you might be wondering what kind of rock is it actually? Uh, now there's usually only uh, three or four types of rocks that you find in Southwest Wisconsin. One being dolomites, one being limestone, another one being sandstone, and then maybe shale as well. And how do you tell those apart? Because when you look at these rocks, yeah, there are some color differences, but they all look very similar. Remember students, rocks are made of minerals. Minerals have specific properties. Remember, color, luster, hardness, cleavage, fracture. And also you're gonna be doing an activity, if you haven't, haven't done it already, about uh, performing an acid test. All right now when you put hydrochloric acid on certain rocks and minerals, they fizz sometimes very lightly or sometimes very vigorously and now there's a certain mineral that we have a lot of around here calcite calcite reacts very vigorously in the presence of hydrochloric acid so 
If you're going on a hike and you're a geologist and you got limestone and dolomite around, which have a lot of calcite in them, this is going to be your friend. So I have brought over a couple rocks, which I think might be... I'm thinking this one is dolomite right here. Now, if you see, even around here when you're, you're driving, riding your bike, and you're looking at local rocks, dolomite is typically your kind of yellowish, tannish colored rock. Your limestone is usually a more grayish variety like these, but we don't know quite for sure. So that's when you do the acid test. Now, dolomite typically does not react quite as strongly to acid. Limestone reacts very vigorously. Let's take a close look, find out which one's which. You know, let's try this one that I think is limestone first. So here's our reaction. It was just a couple drops too. And let's try it. Now if there's this fly that keeps bothering me over here. Uh, let's try it on this one I think is dolomite. Now it is reacting. It is fizzing, but not nearly as intensely as this right here. This is limestone. This is dolomite. So your, your yellowish tannish colored rocks that you see on the road cuts around here, it's a dolomite. Your grayish colored limestone. Now sandstone on the other hand is much easier to spot and you can see it along the roads going to Dubuque or to Madison on 151. It's all has to do with the color. Now I've spotted some of it that looks like it fell off the hillside here and you can tell already when you look at it up close. So here's a more solid piece of the sandstone, but notice I can break it off rather easily. Here's another fragment of it, and it's, what do you know, surprise, surprise, sand. Now, most uh, sandstone fragments that you see aren't going to be as easy as these to break apart. Now, I showed you some marine fossils before, and yeah, it kind of tells you what it was like here millions of years ago, about 400 million years ago. Right, there was a shallow sea that covered much of Wisconsin and a lot of the Midwest. You can find fossils across the Midwest that have marine origins to them. Now you may have noticed the fossils I showed you and some of those rocks, they weren't that big. It's about as big as they got, at least in this area. So you're thinking, you know what? Where are the dinosaur fossils? What about those? Problem is, dinosaurs, they probably roamed Wisconsin long ago but the evidence of their existence has been worn away to weathering and erosion over time. So I may be walking right across where a Tyrannosaurus rex did, but we'll never know. Geology, much like a lot of other sciences, you can think of to be like a book, really long book. Problem is with geology, half the pages are missing and we'll never find them. Now, can you kind of tell the semblance of a story just by reading half the book. Yeah, but you're missing so many of the plot lines, which is the geologist's job to figure out what's missing. Hey everyone, I'm at a new location. And since we were on the, you know, the topic of river valleys, we're at the, the Blockhouse Creek before. And now the Blockhouse Creek ultimately leads into the Little Platte River, which may sound familiar. Then ultimately the Little Platte leads into the Mississippi. So the Mississippi is a pretty big river valley if you ever crossed the bridge into Dubuque, but who about this one? Can you recognize where we are in this photo? Right, and this is one of the locations, ever since I moved to Platteville, where I've wanted to climb to the top to. I have uh, always been interested in just what would it look like from up here. So I'm at the top of the hill climb. And so this is 151, off to the right, here's hill climb road. And so this space right here, whenever you're on 151, you'll see this like clear patch of grass that just leads all the way up to this hill. It actually used to be used to race motorcycles up. Now they wouldn't race head to head, but they just do time trials. And it took me a fair, I'd say about five minutes to climb this thing. Uh, it takes, or it took, the fastest motorcycles about 13 seconds to pick up this hill. Now they don't race the motorcycles up here anymore. It's all closed down. But this is quite a hike up here. My legs are still burning from it. And it's neat too, I hope, when you do drive up and down 151, that you're taking a look at the road cuts and thinking about those main rock types we discussed. Limestone, dolomite, sandstone. Are those in the road cuts that you see along 151? Well, anyway, I'll see you at the bottom.
Definitely not doing that again. Although the trip down is a lot faster than the way up. Oh, so you can see really how steep this hill ends up being. It's up there. Here's my car down in the distance. This is where they used to have the motorcycles line up for their time trials. And people used to camp out here by the hundreds in our little uh, field right in the background, uh, just awaiting this motorcycle hill run. It was really a big deal. Up until a couple of years ago, they ended this as properties changed. And a big thanks to Tim Pitson, the property owner who let me come onto his land. You just don't want to go onto someone's land without their permission. Anyway, when you're crossing this area from time to time on 151 i want you to keep an eye out for the road cuts here and i want you to keep a close eye at the layers of rock that are here we really have a treat here in southwest wisconsin that we can see the bedrock layers that are above that are at the surface and i want you thinking about how these rocks were formed and how they're laid down one at a time the rock layers at the bottom are going to be the oldest and then layers of rock are formed on top one after another so as we go higher the rock layers are younger as we go up and we'll talk about that law it's actually called the law of superposition older rock layers are at the bottom younger rock layers are towards the top all right i think i'm done for the day Whew. that was quite the climb